The problem with the sales industry is that the, those who are good at sales are the ones that get promoted into leadership and then they struggle. And so it's like whoever can solve, solve that will make an impact. And so I, I figured I, I spent 15 years obsessing on how do you solve that? How do you close the, the gap? How do you bridge the canyon from somebody that's great at sales to somebody who's great at leadership? And so I personally with my own teams over the years professionally learned how to do that. And that's where I became highly skilled myself. And then I just had, I just had to figure out how do I take this knowledge and duplicate to get to scale, to, to get leveraged results. Ben is a sales trainer. He grew up knocking doors and then he started helping teams knock doors and now he coaches big sales teams. So he's got the sales process down, but when he came to me, it was all just done very manually, right? So he had no, no presence, no social media, uh, no lighthouse sending the boat out. Uh, tell us what it was like. Um, so, so you were kind of coaching, consulting, but you saw that there was a way to get your message out to more people. Uh, tell us kind of what that realization was like before you had started taking any action on that. One night I woke up and I just had this like frustration. I'm like, man, I have, I've learned over 20 years. I personally have built sales teams and I have no way right now to leverage myself to teach anybody. I don't have any systems created. And I, I had this thought, I'm like, I've got to take this knowledge. I've gained at a tremendous price and put, a, put little chunks into videos. And, and, and I'm like, well, how am I gonna do that? And a common friend of Mark and I's, Kyle Wonderly, he put me on to, to Mark several years before with some of his crypto stuff. And he told me, he's like, Mark's doing like a mastermind to teach how to do a YouTube channel. And I'm like, that's what I need. I need to learn, I want a shortcut. I don't wanna to try to bang my head against the wall and try to like learn how to like do videos, how to do it, like even film one. What camera do I use? What do I do? Like, how do I even set up a, how do I even get going? So I connected in with Mark. And I'm like, Mark, mentor me up, help me to, to uh, build, a, take these ideas, put them into videos. And from there, yeah. I mean, it was just magic. Let's talk about before that, right? So like you were teaching sales teams and then something sparked in you that like, hey, I should try to find a way to reach more people. And so then you wanted it, but you didn't have it yet. Yep. So you weren't sure what to do. And there might've been like some self doubt, like, uh, uh, I don't know if I should do it. I don't really have the money. I don't have the time. I don't know if I'm good enough. Talk us through some things that maybe when you realized you wanted it, but you didn't have it yet. And what some of the things that held you back from taking action? The FUD, right? The fear, uncertainty, doubt, like fear. It's like, well, what if I take all this action and it doesn't go anywhere? The uncertainty of like, I don't even know where, where to start. And, and the doubt of like, who am I to even be able to go and, you know, be, you know, I always have this dream of being like, like my, one of my mentors, Brian Tracy, he wrote the foreword of my first book. And I'm like, I've always had a dream to be like Brian and, and by the way, that I, but from when I worked with Mark, I hadn't written this book yet. The book's after. The yep. book's after. What was keeping you from taking action? And it was, it was fear, uncertainty, and doubt about yep. your own ability. You were afraid to put yourself out there. Yep. Yeah. And, and it's important to understand because we all have that. I did not want to start a YouTube channel. I resisted. It was my business partner at the time. We were forced to because we had to stop running ads. My business partner actually started the YouTube channel. And he, after a few months, is like, Mark, you gotta, you were, we're partners and we're splitting money. You need to be on the channel with me. I'm like, no, 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 I don't want to do it. And, and basically our business was going to come to an end if I didn't do it. He's like, dude, you're my partner. You have to do it. And I resisted, resisted. I didn't want to be known. I didn't want to put my face out there. It was embarrassing. I even started all new channels. So I didn't use my main Instagram or my main Facebook. I created new Instagram and new Facebook accounts because I didn't want anybody I knew to even know that I was doing it. I was so embarrassed. So uh, we all have fear, we all have uncertainty, and we all have undoubt. Now, I think with that, I felt the seeds of greatness in me. I'm like, dude, I know I have something. I literally felt stuck because I didn't know how. Like, well, like, what are the actionable things? Like, I have all this great knowledge. I've, I've personally been there. I've personally succeeded. I've built teams, I've led teams, and those that I've worked with, I mean, I've built a great relationship. But then, but then I was stuck in knowing how do I then take that and serve people that I don't know? And how do I build that credibility with those that don't know who I am? And that's about where I was when we first yeah. started. So then, so then we started working and, and uh, you know, the, the, the benefit of having coaching and insight was helpful, but it's not 
necessarily easy. So then you start going down the path. Let's talk about some of the frustrations and stuff that you had in the beginning. It starts very slow. You don't feel like you're doing it right. Talk us through some of the thoughts that you had along the way. So first, you know, we had our weekly mastermind meetings. The first meeting, Mark, Mark's up there sharing his stuff and we're just like soaking it in. And then, and then he leaves, right? And then I'm on my own. And it's like, well, now I need to do homework on this. I need to go through the modules. And I'm like, holy smokes. And I'm, I'm like, it's exciting, but it's taking a lot of time. And it's like, how I'm literally investing my time, which I could be earning money doing what I'm really good at on my own, like just doing that and just earning, having a job, right? And so, so, I'm, so I'm investing my time, my energy and my money, I'm not making money in it. So I'm essentially putting money in and day turns into weeks, turns into months of, of like building. And it's, it gets, you know, things dry up and it's, you know, the FUD is real. Like, like well, I, this, I know this is, this is my dream, but like, this is a lot of hard work and do I have the, the runway? Do I have the bandwidth? And what if I take all this action and fail? Yeah. Yeah, and in the beginning, it starts kind of slow. So like you're kind Super of, as slow. I said, like talking into the wind and it's like not really going anywhere, right? And then the steam, the, the ball starts picking up some steam. So, so now you've gone down this path, you had uh, amazing success. You started getting thousands of views on your videos which doesn't sound like a whole lot when I'm getting hundreds of thousands of views on a video, but you're getting thousands. But then what started happening? You started having people throughout your industry start recognizing that and going, dang, what are you doing? And so talk to us some of that, like some of the changes you started seeing with people in the industry and, and your experience with your business and stuff. Yeah, so I was always anti-social media myself for like doing social media because I, with my, in my past, I had some unique successes and some unique failures. I didn't want to be showy with my success and I didn't want to be tr exposed with my failure. So, so what I started doing is I started just bullets, li shooting little bullets of just starting a channel. So that I started and I worked on my LinkedIn. I started and, I, and simultaneously I worked on my LinkedIn. I started, I actually posted on Facebook and I just wanted to add a few, add a little bit of value. Once I, like I started it. putting that out a little bit on social, those that I've worked with are like, hey, yeah, go Ben. That's awesome. Yeah, you should be doing this. You should be, you know, and, and then all of a sudden I started getting booked to speak. Like, hey, comes because they people that knew me knew that I that like I could teach their sales leaders and their sales people. And so they're like, well, hey, we're doing this event. And then I started building momentum, and all of a sudden, it 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 started getting a little bit of valid. I started getting a little bit of validation. Like, oh yeah, like and the steamroll started. It, not steamroll. It just like the the puff of wind <laughs> started. Like, started. Yeah. Right. And so now uh, here we are, kind of on the other side of this, and uh, you wrote a book with Brian Tracy, who was one of my first mentors. I've devoured a ton of his content. Brian Tracy is awesome. So you wrote a book with him. Uh, you've been asked to speak and now you're working to build like a whole new platform all based off of this. Kind of talk about uh, maybe where you're at now looking backwards um, with the success you've had um, in achieving this. Like how do you feel differently about your career, your job, like more certainty, uh, like you have more uh, leverage? Yeah, um, you can see what I'm, what I'm up to. You can just go to benward.com and, and you'll see. So I speak with with sales leaders specifically, if you lead a sales team, I will help the leader help their team. And so, um, for example, this afternoon, I, I have my own mastermind that I'm, that I'm doing. Um, and I, well, after, I have to leave here a little bit early and go zip off with, with my mastermind. Um, I speak um, a couple times a month at different leadership events. Getting paid to speak. Getting paid. Um, and I, I've, writ I've written two books. My first book is called Sellership. And it's uh, essentially how to transition from sales to leadership and coined this word sellership. And there's a system, I've created a blueprint through Mark's mentoring, a system to help somebody who's really good at sales to transition successfully into leadership roles. Because being good at sales and being good at leading are two totally different skill sets. And in fact, Brian Tracy, that's how I connected with him. 15 years ago, I was in a mastermind with him, with one of my companies, we brought him in and we built a relationship and he said something that blew my mind. He's like, the problem with the sales industry is that the, those who are good at sales are the ones that get promoted into leadership and then they struggle. And so it's like, whoever can solve, solve that will make an impact. And so I, I figured, I, I spent 15 years obsessing on how do you solve that? How do you close the, the gap? How do you bridge the canyon from somebody that's great at sales to somebody who's great at leadership? And so I personally, with my own teams over the years professionally, learned how to do that. And that's where I became highly skilled myself. And then 
I just, had, I just had to figure out how do I take this knowledge and duplicate to get to scale, to, to get leveraged results from what I was really good at. And so I, I wrote Sellership, and Brian was happy. He was a stud. He's such a nice, nice guy. He loved He wrote the foreword, and then I wrote my second book called, um, which attacks the number one problem in sales and the number one problem in leadership. And, and I, well, probably more than that, but that's my niche. So I'm staying focused. To, I, it speaks to sales leaders. It's called Pluck the FUD. And <laughs> FUD being fear, uncertainty, and doubt. Yeah. So get over the fear, uncertainty, and doubt in your own head. Yeah. And, and just a high-level premise is just like, like if you're growing a garden, what's going to creep into that garden? Weeds. Weeds, right? So you got to get it. You got to pluck the weeds. Or they'll choke what you're trying to grow, just, you know, take up space in the garden and, and destroy, what, destroy the, the intentional plant. Well, listen. Our minds are the exact same. We might have this like idea plant. It's like, ah, you come here with Mark Moss, get all fired up, and you're like, yeah, I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna apply this, I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna do the value ladder, I'm gonna do all this stuff, I'm gonna apply the simple things he's learning, it's all and you get you it's all exciting. And inevitably, weeds of the mind, you leave, you're on your own, weeds of the mind, fear, well, uncertainty. What if I, you know, can I really just doubt, man? Who am I? What if I take all this action and it doesn't work out? So you've got to, you've got to, the most common weeds, fear, uncertainty, doubt, you've got to pluck the FUD in my book is all about how. And, and strategies that I've learned in the trenches, how do I get myself, how did I get my teams, how do, as I, I've worked with tens of thousands of sales leaders, how, like what are the key ingredients, the strategies, the tools, the DNA to actually uproot that FUD? And one last thing, I'll pass it yeah. back to you, but listen, I've learned the easy part in achieving results, the easy part in, in achieving success is learning the skills to be successful because they're duplicatable. You can learn from mentors. You can watch one, do one, teach one. You can see, you can watch training videos, pull up YouTube, whatever. That's the easy part. It's a minimum standard. Anybody can get good at the skills. The hard part, like the real challenge is learning to guard your mind. Yeah, guard your mind. And take action despite inevitable fear. Yeah, good stuff. All right, Ben. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thanks, brother. I hope you enjoyed this short video. There's only so much I can share in a few minutes with you. And if you lead a sales team and want to learn the seven most valuable strategies to create a high-performing team, then check out the Sales Leadership Masterclass. This is exactly what I wish someone would have created for me because it would have saved me decades of figuring it out on my own. Now, I've spent 20 years and hundreds of thousands of dollars to learn this stuff so you don't have to. Click on this link right here or in the description below to check it out.